A very good evening to each and everyone present here. I, Aziz Rahman, on behalf of Izhar, the Debating Society of Jamia Media Islamia, warmly welcome you all to our session titled Build Your Vocabulary, Learn 50 Words in One Hour. Vocabulary is the body of words that make up a language. In other words, it is the backbone of a language. The importance of vocabulary cannot be understated because it gives us a sense of identity and purpose through expression and without a good working knowledge of words and the meanings, both written and verbal communication will be poorly understood. Do you know why people focus, up, uh, focus on building a vocabulary? It is because knowing more words will give you the tools to express your thought in depth and with more accuracy. You have a better ability to understand others because of the wide range of perspectives and ideas that you bring to the table. Therefore, the richer and more copious one vocabulary is, the more fertile and precise one thinking. Parliament ko kya bolte hai? Sora. Uh, with this being said, let me introduce you all to our today's speaker, Mr. Sudhar Baluni. Mr. Baluni has done his BA in English Literature and Political Science. He has been a speaker at the United Nations Global Peace Summit and Youth for Human Rights India as well. He has been facilitated with the Niti Shri Award for Best Delegate in the Uttarakhand Young Leaders Conclave by the <laughs> former Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, Shri Trivendra Singh Rawat. He has also compared the value of words debate competition curated by the former director of Labasna, Dr. Sanjeev Chopra. Now, without any further delay, I would request all the participants to mute their mic until and unless directed by the coordinators. So now I would like you to take the stage from here. Well, thank you so much, Aziza. A very good evening, everyone. It's rightly said that well begun is half done. And I think Aziza has done a remarkable well job. And now the onus of making the session successful lies on me because I think I'll be taking the session forward. And I hope that this session is productive for each and everyone who's joining us today. It's actually a very hot and sultry here in Dehradun. And I believe that it's even more fervid in Delhi. And it's also a weekend and still notwithstanding these two factors, participants are joining in that adds on to my more that also adds on to more responsibility on me because I think I need to serve and I need to do justice with what I am going to I'm going to present today so before before I start with the session I just want to affirm that let me just affirm that if I'm clearly audible or visible just a nod from the audience would do a virtual nod yes sir we can hear you okay great thank you so much so while I was preparing, like I was actually wondering what to, how to go about this session. And the very first question that struck me is obviously, why is vocabulary important? I won't go into what is vocabulary and how words are made, because I think that is very platitudinous. And I think that is being talked of since ages. Now let's, let's understand why is vocabulary important? I'm very pragmatic and very practical person. So let's start with, you know, I, I read theories a lot and just when somebody asked me why is vocabulary important, I was struck with this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Can I adjust my audience? Can I ask my audience to keep the session bilingual? Or would that be fine if I go ahead with English as purely English as the medium of expression? As you wish, sir. If you want, it would be great if you speak in English. Sir. Purely English. Great, great, great. Okay, great. English, great. Okay. So a majority of them say English. Okay, great. Huh. So when somebody asked me why voc vocabulary is important, I was suddenly struck with this concept called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. People who study psychology would know that, you know, it's a pyramid kind of structure that says, you know, Maslow says that there's basic needs that need to be fulfilled first. And then only does a human proceed in fulfilling his higher level needs. That is the same with language as well. I'm not talking about English in particular, but any language, your colloquial language, Hindi language, Urdu language, any language needs a good base, a good base or a pool of words in which it stands. And it has to be really firm. So, you know, just like Maslow says, that you know, once your basic needs are complete, then only will you proceed to higher level needs. So once you have understood what vocabulary really is, once you have garnered good pool of words to express yourself, then only will you be able to 
you know go on to attain and fulfill your intellectual capacity and this is not something i'm not talking from the books this is purely my experience though i'm not very much experienced but whatever wisdom i've gained over the years it is what speaks for me so once you have good pools of good pool of words once you have a good you know i would say a good repository of words it becomes easier for you to communicate and to express your thought uh, very lucidly so hence vocabulary become very important now secondly i need to share my personal experience as well so when i was in class 9 uh, i was given this herculean task all of a sudden to host my annual school meet annual uh, sports meet sorry and that was a very grand event wherein a lot of people along with their parents uh, the whole school gathered accumulating a very huge or uh, in a very you know ground and i need to I, i had to compare the event and i had to be the commentator for the event and i was newly in class 9 i didn't know what grammar was and vocabulary let alone vocabulary forget what vocabulary is i didn't think i have good choice a good repository of words so that time i mean that is like one of the worst nightmares in my life because i realized because when i was given i was incumbent with that task i went on to the stage like we had run throughs before the final event i i remember my english teacher standing right adjacent to me she was standing right beside me and she started chiding me she started scolding me really bad because my grammar was pathetic to say the least my vocabulary was down in the bins i didn't have words to what to say but all i had was uh, like proper pronunciation or maybe certain like flow of words i would say like my pronunciation was good and my diction was good that's all otherwise i had nothing to say i i had i told you proof i didn't know what grammar was so i could not even apply those rules and that event was like i would say life changer for me you won't believe just to prepare for that event it took me like 7 days i had to jot down everything a single line i had to say i had to jot it down because you know i didn't have the requisite vocabulary to speak something because it was all impromptu you know when you go somewhere you see what's happening you have to see somebody's jumping you have to you narrate it to the audience so it becomes really difficult it's no less than an ordeal ordeal is like a very tough task so it was really it became an ordeal for me so i did not sleep for around 4 days because i had to jot down everything i had to jot down every one liner every word i would say once the race would finish and people would come i had to write it down okay this happens that happens and you wouldn't believe it took me around 250 pages of script to be written so why i say vocabulary is important because you would not want to take 250 pages of a script somewhere and go and speak and have a glance at it and then speak what would you rather prefer is to just let those words get ingrained in your head and then speak automatically as you go about the event so that is actually a better way and a very practical way of going about things that is exactly what i did and if somebody comes and tells you that you know you're going to have a flamboyant vocabulary overnight you know it doesn't happen that way there is no grandmaster to it there is no there's no magical wand that can teach you vocabulary in one single day or like within few few weeks or within few months what can one teach is how to approach vocabulary in a more technique in a better mechanism and a more a uh, better form than you're doing so i'm not going to make you tall promises that i'm going to make you learn vocabulary just in one day but what i can promise you that if you attend the session just for one hour it's going to be really productive you're going to learn at least 50 words that is from my side as i told you you are going to learn them but what you do once you leave the session and go home and you have to start applying that approach for yourself as well just don't leave it to the teacher that okay the teacher is going to churn it up in the mixture and give it to you and serve you going to eat it and you're going to get hang of all the words it doesn't work that way it took me i mean there were days when i couldn't speak it took me years to be you know to be able to speak something i don't say that i speak really well but whatever i speak i have put in efforts for years continuously so you need to have that quest to learn something the zeal to learn something it it needs to be there in you so if you as long as you have the curiosity to learn words as long as you have the curiosity to learn things okay it can never be doused you will you will you will come out you will emerge as a person who is well experienced who is who is well learned kind of a person and as i said like maslow said once you develop these words once you learn vocabulary your expression becomes seamless you know you are able to express with people you are able to communicate very fluently and you don't have to emphasize and you know rack your brain to 
search a word and then then put a word in a conversation so that the other person thinks oh he's learned vocabulary once you're in a habit of learning words and training them in your memory it comes automatically to you it comes organically so this is what i say and that is where once you learn vocabulary that is where you proceed towards you know a kind of satisfying your intellectual capacity that is where when you will read articles for for instance you know for political science students uh, for sociology students who read theories you would notice that these thinkers they don't say something out of the blue they speak very normal things which each and every one of us knows but what is it that makes difference it's their just lexicon their jargon they write some heavily difficult words they use it in their theories and and we kind of revere them oh he's given some extraordinary theory there's nothing extraordinary for example wallerstein there's a theory in international relation wallerstein theory and are given by uh, it was like dependency theories when you study it's like developing countries are termed as peripheries semi peripheries so it's nothing it's they're just replacing one word with another word a, a word that is more difficult and giving it to you serving it to you in a way that makes you you know your cells get stimulated and you think that oh this is something worth uh, wondering and worth remembering it's nothing like that they talk about the same truth again and again so it's just the same truth being repeated it's it's just the language that differs so that is why i feel that vocabulary is important so in this session i'm going to give you three tips see i am not the person who's going to talk on very uh, you know platitudinous advice that everyone gives go read newspaper go re- read books and take them take the difficult words you come across you know you encounter and then go and search them in a dictionary i i i'm very practical kind of a person because i feel that you know the joy of reading gets killed when you have to look for a word in dictionary time and time again what's the use of reading then so i'm going to give you three approaches in today's session and if you follow that i mean it worked for me and i really hope it will work for you and definitely just just glue yourself to the device because i'll be teaching you three very important tricks and these are very practically applied tricks and it got me like it got me an accumulation of some certain good words and and i hope that it will get you the same so the three methods that work for me the very the third method the third technique which i'm going to tell you is a very prevalent technique which almost you you might have come across in your coaching centers for when you preparing for your competitive examinations like clat cat anything the the first two techniques are it's what actually i generally practice you know it's it's kind of a personally invented technique you can say so it worked for me and i think it work it would work for you the very first is the method of substitution now how does a method of substitution work now see there is a common word that everyone uses in their language everyone okay so in order to make your english sound out of the box out of the box and sound something like like you really have learned something or you like really creative and you kind of ingrain words in your language it is important that you replace you substitute those normal words with words that are really uncommon for instance for instance like we generally say he's stupid okay now stupid is something is some is a word that everyone knows everyone speaks so what you can rather do is you can substitute a word find a synonym for stupid okay i was i got distracted with the comments i'm so sorry so let's get back to it so you can find a word you can find a word also also at the outset before i start these techniques i just want to say that i'll be keeping the session more of a dialogue rather than a monologue i mean i'll when once i'm done speaking i want the participants to equally participate okay so the very first i was telling the method of substitution now what happens in the method of substitution that you replace a commonly used word with a word that is you know not trivially used trivially used or you know word that is not much used by people so for example he is stupid i i was telling you stupid is one everyone uses this word everybody knows it so if you want to you know get some brownie points as i say your brownie points will be fetched by replacing the word stupid by a word that is uncommonly used yes like sayed said moron you can say moron you can say he's barmy or he's gone bon- he's gone bonkers he's eccentric okay he's he's gone nuts empty headed wonderful see this is this is the kind of participation i expect in the session because i think that is what i keep my audience engaged and that is you know it is a kind of reaffirmation for me that my audience is listening to me so i just want everyone if you if you know a synonym for it if you know another word for it keep typing 
and so that everyone who joins the session learns a good word today so instead of saying stupid you can say he is balmy he's got nuts he's eccentric there are a lot of words so what difference would it make is it's going to make your language sound something different that yes he's bringing something new to the table as what we say in the corporate world he's bringing something new to the table okay but with that being said when i said that you need to replace a word with a word that is very uncommon that doesn't mean that you need to replace a word with a word which people wouldn't even understand make sure that when we are having a conversation the very purpose of conversation imbecile yes very good when you're having a conversation the very purpose of conversation is to make the other person understand what you're trying to say okay otherwise for example you know uh, people are in a habit of ostentation what is ostentation showing off they they flex their vocabulary so they going to throw a word at you you would even know what it means don't do that what i generally prefer to do is what i do is like suppose the weather is nice i say the weather is pulchritudinous it's amazing so i i was saying that provide a synonym that is easy for example i said the weather is pulchritudinous it's amazing so the other person would automatically know that he's talking about something positive that the weather is pulchritudinous so pulchritudinous would mean that it's beautiful okay what generally people do is just to show and flex their vocabulary they do is the weather is pulchritudinous don't forget mind you we are having a conversation the other person should know what you're trying to say it's all about comprehension okay aapko apni vocabulary dikhani to hai but you have to make sure that the other person also understands it so in order to make the other person understand make sure that you attach a simple word with it for example the weather is pulchritudinous it's beautiful the other person would automatically know he wouldn't have to look up in the dictionary you know and he would he wouldn't feel condescended he wouldn't feel that okay he is not somebody who doesn't know it probably so that is the right way of approaching your vocabulary and that's the right way of approaching things second technique for me that worked is association okay now what is association so when i think of a word now when i think of a word i have a person i have an image that comes automatically that is generated automatically in my head for example when you see there are a lot of good speakers in jamia for example if you see sudeep speaking you will say he's a prolific speaker he's a prolific speaker so what happens is you have connected sudeep with prolific adjective prolific now suppose you go on and witness a person who speaks just equally well as sudeep does that word is auto automatically going to come to your head and you want to use the same word for that person also you'll say oh you are a prolific speaker you are a prolific writer getting my point second word second technique is the word of association if you if you come across a word just make sure that you associate that word with a person okay and next time when you come come across another person who has the same qualities make sure that you use the same word okay what it does it it breaks the monotony of your words and people would be more interested in listening to you because they would think that yes he is bringing something good something new in speaking something which is less heard something unheard of second is for example if you if you listen to a good singer okay everyone says he's he is he has a melodious voice or she has a melodious voice replace a word okay associate another word for it mellifluous for example mellifluous is another word for melodious so the next time you see a good singer next time you see a person who sings really good who is like the nightingale so what you going to say that she sings she is mellifluous the song is mellifluous so try try and get my point you are reminding your brain of that person and once you remind your brain of the person the adjective you associated with the person automatically comes in front of you so the conversation becomes more organic it becomes more erudite got the point so the very first technique was the technique of substitution the second was the technique of association i'll give you another example for it for example the food is delicious everyone says that the food is delicious what can be the other words for delicious substituted so the next time when you go to a restaurant go to a cafe when you hang out with your friends you have something in hand to say differently okay in in restaurant they give you even you know feedbacks to write so you can use your you can flaunt your vocabulary there wherever required you can say the food is tant the food was tantalizing it's scrumptious okay it was sumptuous it was delectable 
it was palatable appetizing yes daniel very good lip smacking amazing so these are all synonyms keep them handy because these are very general words you would use them in your daily life so so what are the words we we learned for food it can be delectable palatable lip smacking okay appetizing it can be scrumptious tantalizing so keep these words handy it's not that i've learned these words see i have been learning these words over the years so that is why lucius yes these 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 come automatically to me okay so obviously it's going to require it's going to require a lot of practice it's going to require it going you going to invest a lot of time into it but make sure that you need to be crazy if you need to have command over a certain language not english in particular in any language command over any language you, you ought to have that quest to learn something okay now third is the technique of root words which i think everyone would know not everyone would know but yes you might, it is a very familiar concept of root words so what happens is uh, can i ask the oc to share the pdf please the root words so root words in english are like for example what what is root mean in hindi it's like jag for example just like a tree grows and you have leaves in it the leaves are the different words that are emanating from the same root in the same way we have root words in english and these root words are the words where other words emanate emanate you understand other words stem out of other words are made so guys this concept is really very important it's not going to tell you the exact meaning of the word but if you're appearing for any competitive examination you'll at least get a hint what that word would mean okay so we are going to just learn certain good root words root words that are really you know really important which i find get used very often and get used often more often than not and they generally appear in examinations these root words are definitely going to help you a lot otherwise there are many root words you can go and search them you can google them up you can buy a book okay but the best technique to approach vocabulary still remains the first and the second one the best one it is associating words the more the more words you learn okay your brain is going to you know cement those words in it it's going to ingrain those words so let's start with learning some root root words today okay the very first as you see in the screen is and what power made easy yes i would recommend you i haven't read the entire book it's very i would say it starts from the very basic you can go for it and i want to take this questions at the end you can definitely go for word power made easy it's a good book and for me i think no book is i every book is knowledgeable there is no concept of a good book or a bad book if you are really investing your time in a book it is bound to give you certain good results that's all okay so as you see in the screen the very first root word that we have is ant a n t e ant that is anti and a n t a n t is ant now this a n t e anti is not a n t i this anti a n t e is not a n t i don't confuse it that i i hope that a n t i is very you know when you're some against something it is anti a n t i now we talk about anti a n t e anti and ant so whenever you see a word that starts with ant maybe it is it is possible it is possible that it has a root word in it and the root word will guide you towards the meaning of it and anti here means anti here means before something that has happened before okay before so let's let's start with a new new word today antecedent i i i hope it's a good word for people who read would know what antecedent is antecedent means as i told you the root word here is anti a n t e antecedent what is anti here i told you the root word is before anti means before antecedent means something that has been mentioned before antecedent okay so what you have in an examination is you'll have four choices so the four meanings one of the meanings will be very similar to the root word so you don't have to read you have to don't have to learn the entire word the meaning of the entire word if you know the root word you are going to understand what the other words would mean antecedent antecedent is what something that has been mentioned before okay like i say uh ram is going to school and he is going to school on a bicycle so when i say he he is an antecedent to ram so ram is an antecedent because he has already been mentioned 
yes himanshu sharma writes it previous it's it's amazing previous yes before something that has been mentioned before okay now let's come to the second one anti diluvian anti diluvian anti diluvian same follow the same trick anti i told you anti would mean before something that has happened before good amazing mo 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 shahid writes ancient yes anti diluvian it's i think it's a very common word as well people would have come across this word anti diluvian is ancient old fashioned so if you see a building okay and that has some antiques in it it is anti diluvian okay anti diluvian yes obsolete obsolete yes we can have obsolete for that as well obsolete but obsolete there is a difference in obsolete obsolete is basically used for something which is now redundant you understand redundant which has been used a lot of time okay yes yes no more in use yes good good radhika so got the two words antecedent and anti diluvian let's come to the next word outdated wonderful anukriti writes it outdated exactly that's the same thought i wanted to convey something that has become redundant okay antique antique now it's very easy antique is i i expect everyone to know this word antique now got it what we mean by root words you just have to remember the root words and the meaning of the words would follow antique is again old fashion old fashion ancient now but the two words that are very confusing here and i see people using them intermittently and interchangeably which cannot be done there there are two words antique and antique can someone in the audience tell me what is the difference antique and antique one is a n t i c antique and the other is antique which is the word which is displayed in the pdf antique and the other is antique a n t i c does someone know antique it's a very commonly used word antique we say this person is antique do we say this has every has anyone ever spoken this yes, this sir, like this guy is yes we do say this guy is antique antique is something i yes unusual something unique that is antique and what is antique remember when you speak something when you pronouncing something yes bizarre for that matter okay when you pronouncing something you need to emphasize on the syllables as well one is antique and the other is antique both of them are different one antique is old fashion and the other antique a n t i c is unique unusual okay that my approach to things is antique oh he is an antique guy unique good nazim nahi the next word is belly and bell it's it's a very like very i would say this word is doing rounds around the internet these days rounds around the internet this word bell and belly so guys understand whenever you see a word that starts with bell or belly it has to do with wars or aggression okay now why did i say that this word is is doing rounds around the internet because of the ongoing war between russia and ukraine you know there is an atmosphere the very first is belligerent belligerent i told you what is the root word bell and belly is the root word okay that is war like or very aggressive so what would belligerent mean belligerent would mean yes guys tell me what would belligerent mean belligerent mean aggressive war like so you know during the ongoing war between between russia and ukraine there is an atmosphere of belligerence okay for example we have the young hostile yes hostile okay we have young blood who keep fighting on streets you know you just have you give them a reason they have a reason up their sleeve and they want to dash anyone so what are those kids called what are those people called those people are belligerent they are belligerent belly coast yes belligerent belly coast okay next word is antebellum now this is guys you need to tell me what is antebellum this is your work and i hope everyone would be able to answer this antebellum amazing sayed writes before the war this is what we have studied just right now antebellum guess 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 try and guess it antebellum see this is how root words are going to help you they will tell you 
what it means it will actually they will you know kind you near you to the meaning of it anti we have learned anti what it means anti is before i just told you the very first root word we studied today the second was bellum i told you bell is a war so anti bellum is before the war okay so when i say this happened anti bellum that means this happened before the war next word is belly potent again a nice word belly potent tell me what is belly potent take a fluke take a fluke belly potent hmm what do you mean by potent potent kya hai hota what is potent have you heard the word omnipotent we use it for god omnipotent is someone who is present everywhere yes we use it for power yes ubiquitous omnipotent is some something or someone that is present everywhere god is present everywhere so potent is what potent is power potent is power the power of being present everywhere is omnipotent what should belly potent be tell me what should belly potent be yes good mighty mighty is what should belly be belly is war and potent i told you is what power so somebody who is mighty in war somebody who has the power in war mighty in war yes anukriti wonderful mighty in war is yes amazing azia mighty in war is belly potent now let's come to the next root word that is bene it is i'm so sorry it is b e n e not double n e it is b e n e and b e n ben now b e n e and b e n it means good something really good okay it has to do with good the the very first word we have with it is benevolent a very common word benevolent who is going to tell me what should benevolent mean i told you ben is a bene has to do with what it has to do with yes amazing it has to do with something good kind benevolent is somebody who is magnanimous who is merciful who is generous who is kind wonderful i mean i'm getting a lot of good synonyms synonyms from the audience yes somebody who is kind that who okay god is benevolent for that matter god is omnipotent god is benevolent i hope you are able to understand what root words are okay let's go with the second word benign again an easy word you must have heard it before benign benign yes yes benign tell me benign is have you have you seen someone speak she is a benign girl benign is good natured i told you be, benign i told you bene and ben has to do with yes warm hearted wonderful it has to do with what it has to do with good natured has to do with good to so good to har jagah aayega jayega theek hai benign is good natured okay we always we also write it in a you know invitation we solicit your benign presence what is benign presence benign presence is good natured presence okay the next word is beneficent easy word beneficent i i don't even think i need to tell you the meaning of it you will be able to decipher it yourself tell me guys what is beneficent quickly quickly shoot the meaning in the comment section okay doing good shrishti writes doing good himanshu writes philanthropic okay okay philanthropic okay good okay philanthropic is somebody who does a lot of charity philanthropy okay yes uh beneficent is somebody who's kind again the same word uh beneficent somebody who's very helpful benevolent yes sayed writes benevolent i hope you're going to remember these words because they're going to be useful in your write ups in your articles wherever you use them okay let's come to the next word that is d d e d uh, d is an easy word d means to weaken something theek hai kisi cheez ko kamzor kar dena is d to weaken something okay so the very first here is debase a very simple word debase what is debase what is base base is the foundation in which something stands that is the base okay and if you're debasing something d i told you what is d is to weaken something so if you're weakening the base that means you're weakening the roots of it debasing something means you're weakening the argument weak kar rahe ho aap kisi cheez ko reduce the quality of something good yes <coughs> next is debilitate another good word 
debilitate you're going to find it in many competitive examinations debilitate try and decipher the meaning debilitate i told you d has to do with to weak something yes debilitate exactly it means to weaken something so guys understand ek aapne ek root word samajh liya and the other words are just easily following you able to understand and comprehend what they mean so d mean d means to weaken something debilitate for example you know it's used for buildings buildings which are you know in shambles for example you you visit a ruins of a building you're going to say the building has debilitated you know it's a debilitated building it's weakened next is decimate it's a very common word again decimate decimate is used you know there is a debate ongoing debate and a debate that has been ongoing since ages debate between development and nature development versus nature what happens when you develop in area what do you need to do you need to decimate something yes kis cheez ko decimate karta decimate is you you yes you make something weak you destroy something theek hai you destroy forest you you decimate trees you decimate forest you decimate buildings annihilation for that matter annihilation is a good word annihilation you annihilate it okay annihilation reminds me of dr b r ambedkar's book annihilation of caste okay so remember i i i have an imagery of a word if i read a word for example i read this word annihilation just i told you association the second technique it came to my mind automatically so dr b r ambedkar's book came to my mind automatically so this is called picturizing things and that is how you going to ease yourself with vocabulary the next word is it is declinity it's a good word declinity again it it's 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 been used some years ago not not some years ago just one or two years ago declinity tell me what is decli declivity declivity sorry declivity the same so the same thing for you know people who study economics or mathematics student do you know what a slope is i don't want to be very mathematical here slope is what not the tan tan theta of a line segment or something i'm just a slope is what slope is a kind of a ascending or descending line that's a slope so d is what d is you weakening something maine kya bola d means to weaken something so when you're weakening something will the slope be upwards or will the slope be downwards quickly guys in the comment section tell me will the slope be downwards or upwards when you are decli 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 declivity down good good saditya sayed writes down yes so declivity is downwards a slope that is downwards uh we i i read this word some years ago when we had this uh when we had the pandemic okay we had this graph where in it showed the number of people who are getting infected and people who are getting cured so we wanted the graph to do what we we were anticipating declinity declivity of the graph declivity covid cases declivity yes good so that has got the usage of it a good usage exactly the same usage i was telling you declivity and declivity can be used for you know paths as well you know whenever you have a steep whenever you have a steep or a lofty declivity do, lefty declivity is aapka in hindi we say it dhalan okay that is declivity so be careful of the declivity means be careful of the dhalan that is coming your way okay right carefully there is a there is a steep declivity so got the got the meaning got the usage of it declivity and it has just stemmed from the word de declivity so aapko kya karna hai you needn't remember all the words you need to remember the root words okay once you have got the hang of the root words baki ke khud aa jayenge theek hai okay the next is err it's very easy err there is also a saying to err is human to err is human what does err would what does what does it mean to make mistake good shaivya to make mistake err is to make mistake you know there's a saying to err is human like if you are a human you bound to make mistakes nobody is flawless okay so this brings us to the first word erratic hmm what is erratic so erratic is uh, err is basically suppose you have a designed way of going straight but you deviate from your way deviate from your path that is you are erring okay you are making mistake you are deviating from the path what is erratic tell me guys what would erratic mean then i need responses from the audience erratic would means 
simply something that is inconsistent unsure yes erratic in not uniform wonderful not uniform okay inconsistent for example there are a lot of friends there are a lot of friends of us you know who text us intermittently there are people who text us you know they would text us within no time some days and some days they would they would have erratic replies erratic is they would be inconsistent with their replies so that is erratic second word is aberration aberration again for people who study science would know aberration aberration is used you know we study aberration in lenses decline of for fail okay aberration is basically you know i told you deviation deviation bataya tha na i told you something errs to deviate from your path the same is aberration for example you conduct an experiment <coughs> okay and the desired result you did not get the desired result good divergence wonderful so okay so what is it you did not get the desired result so you aberrated from your path okay you you got an aberrated result diverged not exactly what you wanted because you, it had some errors okay what is the next word we have errant errant guess what would it mean simple e wherever you see e double r r e double r it has to do with mistakes e double r errant wandering yes errant is errant is you know uh default default like for defaulters like we have students who do not do their homeworks on on time okay people who do not follow the dress code so what is it they are what are they doing they are errant students yes they are deviating from what is the norm of the schools or the norm of the college so that is errant got it errant student disobeying yes shivani tapia write it writes it disobeying yes that obeying is like yes you are not complying to something that is errant students okay like she is a she is an errant student he is an errant student misbehaving not exactly misbehaving but yes that's a good try yes somebody is yes, a defaulter probably you know a defaulter doesn't have always have to be misbehaving he can be good natured but a defaulter at the same time okay last is erroneous easy i'm not even telling you what it means you tell me guys erroneous you've done it n number of times so i expect exactly inaccurate is erroneous okay erroneous is inaccurate wrong this brings us to our next root word that is ab now what is what is ab mean ab means to take away okay taking away something from someone the very first word is abate abate is to become less intense okay like the storm abated even if we have law students here they would be able to relate more to this word abatement okay abatement it's it's even a law term abatement is to make weaken ab means ab is the root word the root word means what does it mean it means to take something away away jana kisi se say like dur jana to go away that is away okay the storm abated that means the storm subsided the storm is no longer in fury for that matter the second word is abjure again a good word abjure law students would be able to relate to it abjure violence even political science students abjure violence okay for people who study political science or not even political science for anyone who follows politics you, you must be knowing what is defection what is horse trading you know when when an mla or an mp from or an elected representative from one party goes on to the other side that is defection okay and okay abate abate means abate means like to weaken kind of to become less intense himanshu okay so we were abjure abjure i told you horse trading that happens in politics defection that happens in politics so once an elected representative goes from one party to another party what that elected representative does is he abjures his kind of what we say he abjures his loyalty to the party okay he abjures his allegiance to the party for example there are two clubs in uh, in a college and you cannot join both of them you have to choose you have to choose either of them you have to be a part of either of them okay so in order to be a part of one you need to abjure your allegiance from the second group okay got the point this is the meaning of abjure to take something back 
to abjure violence, to make sure that you don't commit or don't resort to violence, retract, kind of, yes. Renounce, good, amazing. Aziza writes, renounce, amazing Aziza. That's exactly what it means. Abject. Abject is, I think, abject is a good word. Abject is used in economics. Abject poverty. One is poverty. Poverty can be a condition, you know, wherein you get substandard things. You know, you have, but abject poverty is something that is really intense, very intense. You, you cannot even afford basic necessities. You don't even have two square meals a day. So one is poverty. The other one is abject poverty. That is extreme, terrible. Yes, amazing. That is abject poverty. It's used in economics. So abject poverty, is it's actually, you know, it's even worse for a country. Worst kind of poverty. The next is you, you. Okay, we're going to have this last root word today. And then I'm going to give you some confusing words and then we'll wrap up the session. You. You stands for saying something good about someone. Okay, good about something. You. The very first in that list is eulogy. What is a eulogy? Eulogy is basically, you know, for English literature students, you must have read eulogy. Eulogy is a poem that is written in praise. In some in place of something or someone. Okay. Okay, we left with verb. I'm so sorry, we'll just do it before before we okay. We'll take it for the last verb. Okay, eulogy is what I told you eulogy has to do with. Yes, eulogy is when you write something good in praise of someone, and generally it's written in English literature when somebody has died. Okay, that's where it's exactly written. Okay, appreciate good, good Radhika. The next is euphemism. Now, this is a figure of speech. Euphemism is a figure of speech and it is amazing, guys. Euphemism is when you use a word which is less harsh. For example, you go on to say somebody, you're blind. He'll go to take offense, you know. So what is a better word to replace the word blind with a word that is less harsh? You can say, okay, he is visually challenged. That is a euphemism. Got it? Euphemism is that you're substituting a word which is, which is less harsh for example you cannot go on to say somebody who is physically challenged you are lame can you say that he'll take offense so what you're going to do it you're going to resort to euphemism you're going to you're going to say you are he is physically challenged that's a better way of going about saying it euphoria again an easy word euphoria is extreme happiness when you're really happy okay yes euphoria extreme happiness okay now let's quickly come to the word firm ecstasy yes ecstasy now let's come to firm now this is a very common word very common word and it's used a lot of time in various articles and in various competitive examination also guys mind you wherever you want to look at this word that always has to do with either boiling or excited now you will say how is boiling and excited even linked uh, there is a concept of entropy in science. I'm not a science student, but there's in thermodynamics, you study entropy. Entropy is randomness of things. For example, when you boil water, what happens is the particles, they move randomly inside the water. And that is how the water gets boiled up. Okay. So when something is moving randomly, it's obviously gaining kinetic energy. Okay. If it's gaining kinetic energy, the water or the particles are getting excited. Simple. So ferv is, it's either hot or it's excited. Okay, so the very first is fervid. Fervid. Fervid means hot. The weather is fervid. The weather is fervid. Okay, it's it's fervid in here. It's fervid in the room. Fervid is extremely hot. Or you can use it for passion also. Passion. The next word is effervescent. Effervescent. Guys, effervescent is again an easy word. Effervesc effervescent. Deco. It is not always. It is not always. Ki root word here, it has to come as a prefix. It can be in the middle of the word, it can be as a suffix too. Okay. So effervescent is quite lively, spirited. If a person is effervescent, he's very lively, he's spirited. Come to the next word. Fervor. Fervor and fervent. Both of them mean the same. I told you wherever you're going to come across F-E-R-V, it means enthusiastic. Okay, it means exhilarated, it means excited. So keep it, 
cement it in your head firmly fix it in your head f e r v wherever you're going to glance at this word it's going to mean excited enthusiastic and passionate about something okay got it guys i hope that you now know how to go about finding the meaning of words you needn't learn the entire dictionary which is impossible task okay you all you have to do is learn certain good root words and that's going to do the work okay so now let's come to the last part of this that is confusing word confusing usage of word the first word is very easy the pair is very easy the thing is clever and cunning i especially added it because i i i see a lot of people get confused with these two words can someone tell me what would the difference be the words if you go to search it in the dictionary both of them would mean the same but there's slight differences exactly shivani thapriyal has you know hit the nail in the coffin it's clever is used in a positive way clever is used in a positive way while cunning has a negative connotation okay if someone tricks you someone tricks you someone deceives you he is cunning if someone helps you and somebody who is helping you solve some problem he is clever got it so clever is used in a positive connotation and cunning has a negative connotation the second is courage and audacity who would tell me again courage and audacity i see people use them intermittently good courage is sahas and audacity is dush sahas again the same thing courage is used in positive connotation okay somebody who has brought laurels to the country is has shown courage okay but somebody who is indulged in a violent thing he he has the audacity to do it audacity is dush sahas okay the next is predilection and liking now this is my favorite pair predilection and liking predilection is guys liking everyone knows what is liking <laughs> but if you search predilection it also means liking but there is a minute difference when you say predilection for something it means that you like something out of your bias for example i am debate i let's imagine i am debate i am judging a debate competition and i have students from my particular college participating so the thing is i am not going to take into consideration if i'm that bad of a judge okay i'm that unethical of a judge i'm not going to take into consideration okay what like what quality they are delivering okay what their content is but i will have a predilection for them predilection because i know them personally and they belong to my college so it is coming out of this liking for them comes out of my bias because i belong to that particular college okay admiring something yes admiring something that generates out of your biasness okay because we have this de ongoing debate of nepotism as well so wahan par what you have is you have a liking for a kid you don't have a liking for it you have a predilection for a kid why do you have a predilection because you definitely know the kid that is nepotism predilection for something okay the next word there is indignation and anger amazing that's my favorite one indignation and anger indignation guys is anger only but what form of anger it is it is justified anger anger can be justified and unjustified both of them but indignation is justified anger if something unethical something bad or something like injustice is done to you the anger that arises out of it is indignation so anger can be justified unjustified but the justified form of anger is indignation the next is inferno and conflagration what is inferno and conflagration both of them mean fire fire dono jagah hi hai okay now the intensity varies the intensity of both of them vary for example you go to a mall okay and fire breaks out there that fire is uncontrollable definitely but it's still in like it's the intensity of it it is less so that is inferno so we have three stages of fire it's a normal fire we have inferno and then we have conflagration conflagration is basically used for forest fires forest fires something that you cannot even control theek hai infernos are still controllable like the extent of inferno is less than what it is less than conflagration so a forest fire a natural fire for example is an example of conflagration okay guys 
now i am going to like give you another thing i mean that's even not related to vocabulary but i personally see it people commit i mean a lot of people commit this mistake uh even you know i get emails from from various universities not even university from various people and official emails they say please revert back guys can tell me if this revert back is correct or not when i say please revert back to this text or please revert back to this email it's not first of all it is redundant theek hai saditya right please revert period okay saditya say is saying back is redundant good shreya kumar okay says back is redundant you you do not write back revert ka matlab khud hi back hota hai but both of them both of them are incorrect you cannot use revert back for somebody you know to ask somebody to reply to certain thing revert back is what you cannot use it you can either say respond what is revert is revert is to change back to the same condition or same situation for example uh, for example when water freezes it turns into ice okay now this ice reverts to water it means to come back to the same state it nowhere nowhere does it mean that you need to reply to something it is it is connected with wrong usage these days you cannot use it okay you can simply say please respond okay but you cannot say revert revert is to change your physical state or come back to what you were okay i reverted to my uh, i reverted to my previous self that's the correct usage okay it doesn't have to do with reply now i think due to time constraints i'll have to wrap up the session i am going to leave you guys with a wonderful word which i like that is my personal favorite okay and that word has stuck with me and i hope it sticks with you the word is that is the one word i'm going to give you and leave you with it's pangolossian pangolossian p a n g l o w s i o n pangolossian it's my favorite word and why if you ask me why it's my favorite word because i am a kind of a person who you know who undermines myself so i i witness a lot of gloomy days i am despondent every now and then spell it again sir pangolossian p a n g p a n g l o s i o n pangolossian okay everyone is so excited about the word okay that makes you quite excited about it pangolossian p a n g l o pang yes 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 pangolossian i a n pangolossian i spoke in this p a n g l pangolossian is you know pangolossian is used when you have extreme optimism in you i told you i am a kind of person who undermines myself a lot so i get despondent every now and then so this is the word that keeps me going and even if you want to introduce yourself to someone you can say i'm a pangolossian pangolossian somebody who has extreme extreme uh sanguinity or you know he's very sanguine or he's very optimistic who's very positive no matter what the situation is okay just like faz ahmed faz ji says uh dil na ummeed what is it dil na ummeed to nahi na kaam hi to hai lambi hai gham ki sham sham hi to hai so that is pangolossian lambi hai gham ki sham pe sham hi to hai that optimism is pangolossian and i hope that you will carry this word with you and even if you want to introduce yourself with the word you can go ahead with it it's a beautiful word write it down and stick it somewhere it's going to remind you what kind of a person you are and you have to always inch ahead in life so with this i'm going to wrap up and sign off it was an amazing session thank you everyone and i really liked interacting with everyone because i got a lot of responses from you you were actively involved and i'll call it a day from my side i'm signing off thank you so much if anyone has any question they can either uh, unmute themselves sure, sure, or sure. Uh, type in the chat chat box oh hello am i audible uh yes uh, yes you are uh actually one query i have like uh, during my preparation of law school exams entrance exams i used to prepare mm -hmm. a diary and i used to revise them over and over so i used to memorize the words but now the revision is gone over and i have forgot the words 
i can say my vocabulary was good at that time so what is your uh, strategy for revising the words which we have learned so that it remains with us okay that that's a great question i mean i have experienced it myself you know i used to write poems when i was in class 12 or class 11 now when i revisit those poems i remember i get startled i get floored because i used to have a good amount of words which i don't even remember now i used to be like did i write this did did what i i knew this word so it comes as a shock to me now but why does it happen because you break it you know you're not using the word anymore it is human tendency what you learn today you are bound to forget it some in the coming weeks or so so the very second technique just as i told you association is very important once you have an image of a person sticking to that word you are never going to forget it for that matter whenever you want to look at that person you are going to remember or revisit that word which you had learned okay so remembering is you have to practice you have to keep telling your brain that this is the word it needs to learn and it needs to reproduce every time okay so that is the trick like associate with the word ठीक है किसी को लिंक कर दो उस वर्ड के साथ सो दैट इट बिकम्स इजी फॉर यू टू प्रोड्यूस इट और रिजर्जिटेट द वर्ड व्हेन यू स्पीक और व्हेन यू आर हैविंग अ कन्वर्सेशन आई होप दैट आंसर्स योर क्वेश्चन सो आई हैव दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक ऑफन व्हाइल स्पीकिंग वी वांट टू पुट अप सम पुट अप सूटेबल वर्ड्स टू दैट सेंटेंस बट वी आर एंट एबल टू डू दैट सो सर हाउ हाउ शुड वी मैनेज दैट बिकॉज़ इट ऑफन हैपेंस अगेन अगेन आई टोल्ड यू यू नो एवरी एवरी प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इनफेक्टिव कम्युनिकेशन stems out from the fact that we are out of the habit of practicing words okay we we fell we fell we fall short of vocabulary and this is you know the, the only the only thing that can rescue you here or that can come to your rescue is that can come to your rescue is that you revise the words i i told you just like you associate some you know just as i said you cannot say oh she is stupid he is stupid replace the word and start using the word from now on he's bummy he's bonkers he's gone bonkers okay he's gone nuts he's eccentric ओके ही इज एन इनकम्पूव फॉर दैट मैटर सो ऐसे क्या होगा यू आर गोइंग टू रिटेन द वर्ड ओके for a longer period of time indeed sir you just highlighted and explained so lucidly about the most necessary point which are uh, which is need to be considered in mastering vocabulary uh, so sir uh, now I, i would like to uh, call upon mr anurag upadhyay member of azhar the debating society to extend a vote of thanks thank you very much ms azizar rehman a very good evening to all of you indeed it was really a wonderful insightful and fruitful session so i on behalf of his hall debating society first of all want to pay the utmost gratitude and respect to our honorable guest speaker mr siddharth taluni sir for making this evening special by the shares of his knowledge skills and experience and to guide us the way of success by taking out this precious time for all of us sir after learning a lot from you i can remember the line by david crystal that vocabulary is a matter of word uh, word building as well as word using so if you want to develop and innovate your vocab firstly start building it and then practice by using it in your daily conversation because practice makes a man perfect importance of words are recognized by their context in which they are used the masters of vocabulary play with these words because the context is their play camp sir i want to i would like to thank you once again and appreciate your interesting interactive and wonderful art of teaching in the field of vocabulary then i would like to thank the men behind this wonderful idea and initiative mr raghib noshad the convener and mr sudeep krishna the co convener the two guiders and leaders of ishar debating society then i would like to thank our event head mr pizza the muslim and each and every other member of ishar debating society who really worked very hard to make this event possible and efficient at last but not the least i want to thank our audience for making the session interactive with their gracious presence and for maintaining discipline throughout the session i hope that the knowledge techniques and experience you earned from this session will definitely inspire 
and help you to achieve your goal in life. With this, I would like to hand over the window to Ms. Aziza Rahman to wrap up the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anurag. Thank you, sir, for such an amazing and insightful session. We hope that the audience were able to enjoy and learn at the same time. Thank you all for join, joining this session, and we look forward to catching up with you all in upcoming session. Thank you. Thank you.